You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and um, we're talking about what the the kind of innovation that the federal government wants to bring to make sure that the um, revenue increases, because the federal government has. Uh, promise that they will double government revenue without imposing extra tax. Recall that a lot of people are already complaining about the taxation and all that. 7.5% value added tax, tax in this, tax in that. And even when the subsidy is being removed, that's some kind of tax because you are paying for what the government used to pay. So you're paying, but tax is just payment. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, but we have uh, the privilege of having Nika Gule in the house this morning. Nika Gule, public affairs analyst, is in the UK, if I'm right. Good morning and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning, uh, Nigerians, and uh, thank you for having me. Okay, like I said, a lot of people are complaining already about what the uh, situation in the country is, and knowing that there's so much tax that we're paying, at least that's what is perceived, that there's so much tax we're paying in all aspects of life. You do your banking, you pay too much taxes, you do your petty trading, we are hearing that everybody will be paying 7.5% and all that. But the federal government has said that they are not going to increase the taxation. Already, are the taxes or the taxation, is the taxation not increased as at this point, in your opinion? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, in answer to your question directly as to whether the steps that have been taken by the current government uh, do not amount to an increase in taxation already, um, the answer is yes or no. Um, a taxation is meant to take money away from people and put it together in a pool so that government cannot have money to provide security and welfare to the people, which is their constitutional mandate. Mm. So the steps that have been taken by the current government, they have not amounted to a direct increase in the tax rate in any of the taxes. For instance, VAT is still 7.5%, uh, company income tax is still 30%. So in, in, in that direction, the answer is no. The current government hasn't increased taxes. But there is an implicit increase in taxes by the actions of the current government. For instance, if you were to send school fees to your child abroad before, you approach the central bank and bought dollars at 450 naira a dollar, and this government has now collapsed that market such that dollar is now selling at over 700 uh, naira uh, to anybody for any purpose. Uh, it, it is some sort of taxation that you are now having to pay because the extra money that is not taken away from you to be able to get that dollar amounts to like uh, taxation. The same thing will happen to the fuel price. So uh, you drove into a petrol station and you bought fuel in the neighborhood of 180, 195 Naira before. Now you have to cough out 500 and something to buy the fuel. Government has successfully taken money away from you. And that also is an implicit tax as it may stand. So that is why I say the answer is yes or no, depending on which perspective you are looking at in terms of this government increasing taxes or not. Now the government has said, okay, they are going to increase the revenue. They are going to double, in fact, the revenue. Remember that in the uh, inauguration speech, he talked about the economy growing by 6% or something like that. And uh, now he's talking about doubling the economy or the whatever it is uh, by uh, without having to increase the tax. Now you have said taxation or taxes are things that or collection of money from the people to put it in a pool as you defined it so that government can have money to spend on infrastructure and everything else that we need in the country. Now, 
how is it possible to double the uh, fortunes of Nigeria, as it were, without having to increase taxes? I mean, it's very possible. Very, very possible. And the reason why I say that is that the Nigeria economy is very virgin, totally unexplored, totally not harnessed. We have vast amount of resources that are still untapped, locked either in our rich agricultural lands, locked beneath the, the, the surface of the earth in the mineral resources that we have, locked in the human capital that we have, locked in the infrastructure like the steel plants that we have all over the country, locked in the tourism that we have not yet explored, locked into in so many areas. And all the government needs to do is to unlock value from these things. And once you unlock value from these things, the same tax rate will draw in, I would say, if the government is actually very serious in terms of being very focused in their plans and objectives and the execution of SEM, we can triple or quadruple Nigeria's revenue uh, within the four-year span of this government. because. We, we, are, we are basically, we, we, it's, we, Nigeria is like a, a kitchen with so much food stuffs inside that we haven't even started to cook the food, you know. So if Nigeria goes on a cookathon, as uh, Hida Bati went the other day, yeah. with the resources we have in Nigeria, nonstop, they, we, we, we are going to unlock humongous wealth. And tax is, is on the wealth that has been unlocked. So even as um, company income tax, for instance, uh, remains at 30%, right now, if we are taxing 30% of, say, 1 trillion, assuming the 1 trillion now increases to 30 trillion, the same 30% is going to bring in a lot more revenue than what is, is bringing now. And, and we, we haven't started. We are, if you look at Nigeria, uh, immediately we discover crude oil, and then we have this concept of federation account, where money from crude oil go into federation account, and then it is shared uh, to the three uh, tiers of government, federal, state, and local government. And Nigerian executives, both at the federal uh, and, and the subnational, at the state and local government, have become very lazy. They're basically waiting on the federation account. If people take their eyes off the federation account and begin to look inwards, begin to unlock value from their economies at the local government, at the state level, and even at the federal level, Nigeria's economy will, will not be talking about a GDP uh, that we're talking about currently. But Our will that, GDP will, will, will be... About, will, will that come about without uh, tweaking the constitution a little bit? Because uh, uh, if... We have to have creativity at the local government uh, level and the state level. There has to be some kind of freedom for these people, these tiers of government to operate. Do you think in the Nigerian constitution, these tiers of government have this power to exist and perform the way you are thinking they should perform? There's only so much creativity that you can have when you don't have the pre freedom to practice what you have created. I am not a fan of the current constitution that we have because I believe that the current constitution that we have is a contraption that was put together by, by, by General Abacha in his bid to transmit from a, a military junta leader to a civilian president who will still have maximum powers of a military junta leader, even why he's in Agbada. So I, 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 I'm not, I, I, I don't have any love for the, for the current constitution that we have. I believe that uh, we have wasted 24 years of uh, National Assembly time uh, that we could have actually given Nigerians a real people-oriented constitution. Because the constitution we have currently is a lie. It's a lie in two ways. Number one, the constitution calls us the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But we are not operating a federal republic. 
we are operating a unitary government. That is the first thing. The second thing is that the constitution says, we, the people of Nigeria, gave ourselves this constitution. That's also a lie. Because the people of Nigeria, the federating unit in Nigeria, all the uh, ethnic nationalities in Nigeria did not come together to say, this is the constitution that we are going to operate on where all of us have, have our interest in. So the constitution we have now to me is a document that should have been discarded within the first few years of, the, of this, this the democratic dispensation that was started in 1999. But having said that, it is not as if the, the, the governments, both at the federal, state, and local government, cannot use the current constitution to unlock value from the humongous resources that abound in Nigeria, both on the surface of the earth, below the, the surface of the earth. And I'll and I give you uh, an example. I am from Benue State. And Benue State has the tag of the food basket of the nation. Benue has a rich agricultural land. Anywhere on the surface of Benue State, you will plant something is going to grow. Benue has a sufficient amount of rainfall uh, during the year, a sufficient amount of, of, of sunshine that can, that can make uh, 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 crops to, to thrive. In the current constitution of Nigeria we have today, there is nothing in that constitution that stops successful governors of Benue State of putting tractors on Benue land, clearing the land, and engaging in large-scale industrial agriculture. Yeah. There is nothing. If the first governor of Benue State, uh, under this democratic uh, dispensation, Georgia Kume, decided that he was going to embark on an agricultural program where he will plant one million uh, trees, one million economic trees, uh, tree crops, in each of the local governments in Benue State. Today, Benue will be a major exporter of coconut, of oranges, of bananas, of, uh, of uh, uh, cucumbers, of uh, watermelons, of uh, uh, cashew nuts, and all of those things without the constitution stopping him. There is nothing in the constitution of Nigeria today that stops any governor in, in Nigeria, any governor of unlocking value from the agricultural sector, for instance. So what is stopping them? Nothing. The only thing that is stopping them is that they know that at the end of the month, they are going to Abuja, where Big Daddy, the federal government, is going to uh, unlock value and give them money, give them fat checks running into billions every month, and they just go back and spend it. And if you look at uh, the, the federal government, for instance, as we speak today, and I keep emphasizing on this, and I just hope that the handlers of the current regime also care about this. As we speak today, Nigeria is operating on 3,000 megawatts of electricity. Perhaps in Plus TV now, you are running on generators. If you are not running on generators right now, you will switch on your generator during the course of the day. There is nothing in the constitution of Nigeria as we speak today that stops the federal government from expanding the power generation, transmission, and distributing networks in Nigeria, either by themselves or by bringing in global capital that can do that. There is nothing, there's nothing in the, if there's anything in the constitution of Nigeria that stops the federal government from doing that, someone should point it out to me. But the federal government is lazy, they've taken their eyes off the ball, they don't understand that without electricity, the economy will not thrive, regardless of what they try to do. So they have been changing ministers of finance who manage uh, the, the, the fiscal, side of the economy. They've been changing central bank governors who manage the, the monetary uh, policy aspect of the economy. They've been doing this or that, but the economy has not been growing because the economy is not powered with sufficient electricity. If you compare us now to okay. Brazil, we'll have to, that we'll has have the to same population right like now. us, we'll as we to speak up. today, Brazil is distributing 150,000 megawatts of electricity. If our leaders can take their eyes and look at Brazil and say, why will Brazil be distributing 150,000 megawatts and we are just doing 3,000 megawatts? 
Yeah. Then it will begin to bring a bell in their heads as to why our economy is not doing well. Okay, uh, thank you, Nick. It's so unfortunately, we cannot go beyond this time. I uh, would like to thank you for coming on the show this morning, Nick. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, nice day to you and to Nigerians. Thank you. Okay, that was Nick Agule, public affairs analyst, talking to us from the UK. We'll take a very short break. When we return, we'll be looking at uh, whether or not uh, the craze for Guinness World Record is something that anybody should jump on. Stay with us. <laughs>